From a philosophical perspective, I think we will learn a lot more in the 21st century from Taoism, from Lao Tzu, than from Confucius or Aristotle. Why do I say that? Taoism is a very, very ancient philosophy. Actually, it's prehistoric in Siberia and China. It deals with the universe as an interaction between two poles. Uh, in our classical way of thinking, or conventional way, an entire scientific domain, we're dealing with cause and effect a linear process. Out of the void came the one, and the one then created everything else. That's why in science we are needing a Big Bang, and in religion we always need some, you know, creator at the beginning who does it all. The original cause, or the primordial cause, that's called. Taoism doesn't do that. Taoism starts with the void, and out of the void comes the duality, the polarity. And it's the interaction of the polarity between the yang and the yin that creates reality. It's a completely different view, and a completely different dynamic. And what we now have discovered over the last five, six years, with uh, the work we've been doing on complexity theory, complex flow networks, that at least for every living system, we're sure that the Taoist model is actually the more appropriate form for understanding how mechanism works. In other words, and I know this is going to be sound strange, what is absent is as important as what is present. The absence of order is as important as order. Because it's in that interaction that the flexibility can manifest the resilience to adapt to new circumstances. If you only focus on order or efficiency, which is another consequence of the order, you will end up with a brittle system that when the environment changes, when the conditions or the challenges are modified, suddenly the whole thing falls apart. It's the absence of these characteristics that actually gives the flexibility to the system. I know this is an unusual way of thinking, but that's the key that Lao Tzu in the 5th century in China formalized. Lao Tzu was not the originator of Taoism. He was just the organizer of it, the scribe, uh, the masterful scribe about it. He was scribing stuff that dated thousands of years before him. Now, in our civilization today, we only understand efficiency. We only push efficiency in engineering and certainly in economics. And the consequence of that is, well, it's normal to have a single system, a single currency, because that is efficient. And then I have to answer, and it is also the reason that everything is so brittle. So, we can create an ecology of currencies, multiple currencies at different scales, which is less orderly, which is less efficient, but it's more resilient. And it has the capacity to adapt to the new needs for the 21st century. It would have the capacity to develop, to give space for the gifts the greater variety of gifts that the humans have to give, contribute to society, to manifest. When you're dealing with a single system, particularly an extreme young currency, which is what we have, every feature about our conventional money is young. It's hierarchical, it's controlled, it's concentrating, it's, competi it's competitive. That's all young. When you have that as an only game, then the only legitimate activity that humans have, or the only game in town, is a competitive job, a competitive market. 
I'm nothing against competition. I have something against its monopoly. Because there are many skills, many gifts that don't have the space to manifest. <laughs>